project files for this will be in the description, which also has the version of the app that demonstrates the old and slow swipe method, which you can switch between. This tutorial is going to show you how to get faster and more responsive swipe input. I'm creating this tutorial as all the other methods on YouTube that I've found generally output the actions after the players release their thumb from the screen. This tutorial will show you how to get the player's live swipe input and activate anything you want before the player releases their thumb or finger from the screen. First we want to make sure that the project's built for Android. We can do that by clicking file and looking for build settings. After that we can click on Android and then click switch platforms at the bottom. Next we want to go down to player settings. Then we're going to look for resolution and presentation. And we're going to switch the game to the orientation to portrait mode. If we select game we can see that the game has been set to an aspect ratio for portrait. Here we want to right click, go to UI, and then add a text object. So next we want to go to our canvas, and then we're going to select world space, and drag the camera to the render camera. Next we just want to position the text in the middle, and then drag it and size it the way you want it to. I'm just going to have it here right in the middle. And I'm going to adjust the font. And then we're just going to write waiting in the middle. Next we want to head down to our project files. We want to right click, select create, and create a folder for scripts. And in our scripts folder, we're going to right click create a C sharp script, which is where we're going to put our code. So we're going to call it player, just like we'd be setting up a player character in a game. Then we're going to create a game object and call that player as well. And drag the script onto the player. And we're also going to set the background of the camera to white. We also need to select our canvas, go to UI scaling mode. We need to go to scale with screen size. And then adjust the text. Next we can open our script and start typing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of our start method because we don't need that. And then we're going to set up all of these variables here. Come up to the text to make sure that you are using Unity's UI system. So this one is um, going to be assigned to the text that we're going to output to, just to demonstrate if we're swiping up, down, left or right. Um, this one here is going to store the position where we start swiping our finger. This one's going to store the current position that our finger is at, at on the screen. This is going to store the in touch position and this will disengage any swiping if we've reached the target that we like and this will be the target for where we want to swipe to um, and this one will be the range that registers a tap so we're just going to create a method and then we're going to call it from the update then we're going to add this code here which will take the starting position of when the player first presses their finger onto the screen um, it'll begin a touch phase and at zero when we're referring to zero we're referring to the first uh, input on the screen and then from there after the if statements begin it's going to take the position where we first touch the screen and store it into this variable next we want to create um, this if statement which is going to be taking all the information while the player's thumb is currently moving all around the screen it will then figure out the current position where the player's finger is on the screen and then we'll do some calculations to figure out how far it's traveled by the current position it's at which we take away from the starting position next we want to create this if statement which is going to stop the player input once it's reached our target that we want to swipe to we're going to have these four if else statements which are going to basically looking out for our live swipe input 
where the player's finger is currently on the screen. Uh, that's going to be set by this variable that we've got here, which is our swipe range. Uh, once the player's thumb or finger has traveled a certain distance, which is set by this variable, which we'll do soon in the editor, it's going to activate one of these if statements and output to our text object that we've set up as well. It will also change this boolean that we've uh, that we've set up as well, which will prevent us from accessing this if statement, which is going to prevent you from repeatedly activating any methods or outputs you have set up in this if statement until we've taken our thumb or finger off the screen. So next we're going to do our typical end phase for the touch um, which you'd find in the slower less responsive uh, inputs we'd find anyway just to confirm that the player has left their finger from the screen. This boolean is going to be set back to false so the next time we swipe we can still access that set of if statements for the swiping input. Uh, it's going to record the player's end touch position and then we're going to calculate it again to see how far it has traveled and in this if statement here um, we're going to use our tap range to make sure that the player is doing a tap on the screen. It's going to be within a very small range and then activate whatever output you're looking for. So we're going to jump back into our editor and we're going to assign the swipe range and the tap range for the player as well as adding our output text after we've saved it. So now we're going to set our swipe range to 50. So when the player has traveled about 50 pixels across the screen, then it's going to activate any of your methods or outputs that we want. In this case, the output of the text. And then we're going to set our tap range to 10. So if the player quickly taps their finger on the screen, it's going to be within that range and register it definitively as a tap. We want to have a little bit of um, a range on it, like 10. When people tap their thumb on the screen, it's going to move slightly. That's why we don't want to set it to like 1 or 2 or 3, anything like that. And then we want to drag the text into our output text. As you can see now, after we've built the project, when we swipe, it's nice and fast and responsive. So that's all I have for today. If you're interested in how I implemented this into my own project, you can follow my other two episodes of my devlog that I've started and find out more about that.